Hello, everybody. It's Chris, and we are going to be doing a TikTok react. If you hear noises in the background, the kiddo and the guy are in the kitchen carving pumpkins, and the, the, the dog is beside me being a crank, as usual. Um, my name's Chris. If you don't know me, I have a health background. I also have a lot of knowledge and experience with diet, fitness, nutrition, weight loss. I've helped people lose weight before. I've studied it all obsessively, and I've lost a little bit of weight before I had to a few years ago. Um, kept it off, was fit most of my life, but kept it off. And now I have gained weight due to some health issues and bad habits and everything. And I'm on a weight loss and health journey uh, currently right now. So, and I share that and everything. I don't share everything, um, but I share enough. So, and, and that uh, comes and goes. So, but I react because I have a medical background and I have the knowledge and I just like to dispel the myths from these crazy people in fat acceptance who make me freaking crazy. And I react to the girl world, Amber Lynn, and some others thrown in there and stuff like that. And I also talk about whatever I want, throw other random things, little vlogs and stuff like that in. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, like the channel, subscribe, and, and check me out and see... Uh, see see how it goes here we have a nice little community uh the channel's growing a little bit i've only really been making uh videos this year and there was a a, a couple months i've taken off but i'm really into the swing of things and i'm going to be making content regularly so that's that's a lot of fun and if you're a returning follower guys thank you all so much we're almost at 500 subs and i truly appreciate each and every one of you i've got the coolest little community going on right here and i love it today i just typed in fat acceptance on tiktok you know because <laughs> it's halloween halloween weekend and why not have some tricks or treats more tricks more horrors less treats but maybe we'll have some treats in the form of sanity in here um we're gonna look at some of these and i'm gonna give my own ask or opinion so Let's, let's see what we have today. Is your life better? Are you happier? Is, is everything better now that you're slightly smaller than you were before? Absolutely. And I'm not a little bit smaller. I'm a lot smaller. I can still have kids and that may not have happened if I had to stay the size I was. Like, my question to you is, can you honestly say that you are 100% happy and healthy? Um, I think it's really interesting that I feel like I need to justify my existence in this room. No. I just think that, the, the, that this is a, this, how the way the discussion is running is very indicative of the general prevailing attitude towards fatness and the refusal to even accept that so potentially defensive. there can be other ways of living as a, in a healthy up, body. I just want to know what what are you what are you eating like i just want to know and i'll tell you what i eat and we can and, work and out. so that's what it comes down to like you're, what you're saying well, is you said incredibly you do like it's it's such a small equation that you you want to know what i eat I yes um it comes down to food it comes down to your food guys i know i've said this before and you've heard me say it a million times if you've been here it is not genetics. It is not your medications. It's not health conditions. Things like that can slow your metabolism, uh, increase your hunger, mess with your satiety, hormones and stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, and that, that can lead you to gain five to maybe 10 pounds. I've been generous and given you up to about maybe 20. But it's all mostly because... You end up burning less calories because it slows down your metabolism and you have to compensate for that and you haven't and you gain weight or they make you feel hungry and you eat more or they make you tired and you're sitting around more and you're bored or you're depressed and you eat more. It all comes down to what you eat. Your body, I've said this a million freaking times, your body cannot pull energy out of the stratosphere, okay? You have to put it in and you're doing that in the form of some type of consumption maybe you don't eat a lot except you do but let's just say you don't you're probably drinking your calories you're getting them from somewhere and these people are delusional she's so mad 
giving that skinny girl who lost all that weight a bunch of shit. Are you happy now? Are you better now that you're in a slightly smaller body? Like trying to downplay, first of all, the girl's achievements. And I'm glad she, she's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm a lot smaller now, and I am much better. Thank you very much. And then that other lady said, I just want to know what you're eating. And then then Kelly Drinkwater got super mad. Is that what it comes down to? What I'm eating? And and, then, yes. You know what I mean? They can dish it, but they cannot take it. And it's it's a two-way street. If you're going to give shit, you got to take it. And you got to get called out on your bullshit. And do they wonder why they are so called out all the time? It's because they are so full of absolute crap. And if they were just full of crap and going about their own business, I wouldn't care. But they are encouraging people, uh, impressionable people, depressed people, young people, to do actually dangerous, harmful things. And they're dying. These fat activists are dropping dead. But you know what? As soon as somebody dies, they completely stop talking about them. Because, of course, it wasn't the the fat, the coronary artery disease, the inflammation, the stroke, the type 2 diabetes, the complications from sleep apnea that killed them. It, it was stigma. Ugh. Please tell me this lady is saying something good she just asked you a question why are you trying to derail or sidetrack her question because they cannot take the heat and push the argument onto her yep she literally asked you what do you eat and she doesn't want to say because if she goes oh i drink water and eat lettuce leaves and i live on air and i can't lose weight and i exercise 18 miles a day it's gonna it's it's a bunch of crap right but she doesn't want to say oh i glutton myself and i eat 10 pints of ice cream and five cheeseburgers and 18 pounds of sugar each day then, then that would be her admitting, oh, I guess I am my size because of my weight. So, see, she won't do it. This is what I can't stand about the fact... I'm a little hyper tonight, guys. I'm, I'm very sorry. Acceptance community. They say that they're happy with their bodies. They'll... They're not. Eat what they want and they'll be they happy do. regardless. Yet, once you start questioning their eating habits and whether they're exercising and the fact that what they're doing is promoting obesity, which is a serious illness that is linked to several other illnesses. Thank you. Yeah, see, this is trick-or-treat edition. This is a, a, a treat. Including cancer, they will immediately deflect Yep. and make it seem like the person that's questioning them is in the wrong. Oh, you've hurt my feelings. You know, you asked me, what do I eat? You've hurt my feelings, and now I'm mad at you. And everyone should be mad at you because you questioned me. Uh, is your and, and that's very true. And like, like I said, they just, they cannot handle it. A reminder that it's normal to gain weight as you grow from a teenage girl to a woman. No, it's not. No, it's not. Maybe you gain 5, 10 pounds, but... By the time you're graduating high school, you're pretty much fully grown. And it is not normal to suddenly, oh, your body doesn't go, oh, we, we graduated high school, time to gain weight. No, you could, you could have flunked and been in high school until you're 23. No, it, it's not normal. You're, when you're fully grown, it's up to you to maintain your calories and stuff like that and your activity level. People gain weight once they get a high school, out of high school because they're not as active or they're, you know, they have more free time and they're eating more. They turn 21, they get into college, they start drinking and partying and doing what they want. And, um, you know, it's not the freshman 15 anymore these days in America. It's the freshman 50. That's kind of what happens. And this, like this girl, she has a nice shape. Healthy, healthy BMI, healthy shape, looks great. It's how she's supposed to stay. And like I said, gain an extra 5, 10, 15 pounds, who cares? But she's not too thin. They would say she's too thin. That is a healthy, healthy body. Wow, that, that's sad. Wow, that's sad. Um, pretty girl, really super fit, great shape. Uh, and at 22, she has let herself go and, and gained probably about 75, 80 pounds. 
that's not normal. That is not normal post-graduation, I'm no longer 18 weights. And yes, your metabolism will slow down a little bit as you get older, but it's not going to be that slow when you go from 18 to 19 or 20 or 21. You're still freaking young. You know what I mean? That's, that's an excuse. That's tragic. Okay. This is labeled. What I eat in a day. Titled, it says choosing yourself and creating a safe, judgment-free space for other people to also choose themselves. Okay. And it's a what I eat is a fat person that doesn't diet and focus on weight loss. Because I don't like myself and I'm lazy and I'm gluttonous and I don't want to put in the hard work. I added that last part. Okay, I'm guilty, but let's... Oh, this is Ruthie. This is, this used to be, she called herself fat vegana. Now she's like no longer a vegan. So instead of having just an absolutely atrocious vegan diet, she has an atrocious regular diet. And it, it's a shame because again, very pretty girl, beautiful eyes, beautiful hair. It's a shame to see. And if you went back and looked at her older, older videos, you would see that since she's been in this movement, she's really put on, they all do. When everybody gets in, anyone who gets in this movement, they don't just stay the way they are. They, they, they get bigger and gain and gain and gain. It's such a toxic, toxic death cult. The fat person that doesn't diet or focus on weight loss, egg and ketchup burrito. Okay, now listen, I don't mind that. The egg is good. I put ketchup on mine. Um... It'd be better if it was like a whole wheat burrito, maybe put some more egg in it, maybe add a little extra protein, but all in, this is not too damning. Peanut butter Ritz bit. Let what did she have there? No. Okay, she has water and some Ritz peanut butter bits. Uh, she really doesn't need a snack. If you're big, if you're really, really overweight, you don't need a snack. Guys, we eat too many times a day. You don't need breakfast, lunch, and dinners and 18 snacks. You really don't even need breakfast. Eat lunch and dinner or breakfast and dinner, skip lunch. And you don't need, if you're overweight by more than 20 or 30 pounds, you don't need to snack, okay? You know where your snacks are? are On your butt or your fupa or, what, or your arms or whatever you want to call it. You're carrying them on your body. Let your body tap into those fat stores to burn them. For God's sakes, let your insulin level go down for, for a minute. Because heaven knows we can't have our insulin levels go down at all throughout the day. You know, it's like crazy. And that's one of the most uh, problematic things with weight loss and fat. So I mean, insulin is called the fat storing hormone for a reason. And we always are constantly, one, eating too much sugar and processed carbohydrates. And then we're eating constantly. So our insulin goes up to deal with that food and stuff we eat. It starts to come down back to a normal level where you want it. Oh, got to eat again. Got to eat again every two hours, three hours. And you're drinking calories and that keeps it up. And that's chronic high insulin. That's hyperinsulinemia. And that's bad for you. You want to have periods of time where your insulin levels come back down to normal. Oh, I'm going to have to. I'll do some more talks on that. The, the, that's a whole different video. But anyways, peanut butter. Rich. I go off on tangents. It's bit lettuce wrapped. Hard. And hopefully you guys learn something. Okay, a lettuce. Okay, this is weird. It's a lettuce wrapped hard boiled egg with hot sauce, but it's a, a good meal. Good protein, good fat, a little bit of lettuce, no refined processed carbs, a little bit of salt from the hot sauce. I give this one a great big two thumbs up, Ruthie. Hard boiled eggs with hot sauce. This chocolate pudding thing. It was chocolate plant based pudding. Had a strong coconut Boiled flavor. Eggs. Oh, I bet the it was a coconut milk. It was still a plant based. Uh, this. Uh, Conanches. 100% uh, plant based, only 100 calories a cup. Okay, now a little indulgent like that is good, but there are people that would eat four cups in a sitting. So that that's not so good. But if you can control yourself, something like this, give you that little sweet treat, that little dessert kick, the little chocolate craving is scratched, you know, not too bad. And I've never, I've never seen thing these in the store. I wonder where she got those. I bet they looked they looked good. <laughs> it was pretty good, but had a strong coconut flavor. Doritos. 
I mean, don't eat the Doritos, girlfriend. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? She's so, I think she's like super pretty. She's got the most prettiest eyes. And it's like, but it sucks because, you know, she seems to have like these nice big cheek, high cheekbones and stuff. But the problem is, is once you get really, really big and you start getting really heavy, your, your face and everything fills out so much that like literally your features are hidden under fat and you can't see just how pretty people are and what they really look like because all of those features are kind of washed out. Chili cheese. Oh God, no. Chili cheese spaghetti carbs with bad carbs and fat and probably bad fat this is not the best and that guys that bowl is honestly probably about two and a half or three servings of pasta a side of pasta a, 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 a um, serving of pasta is little it's really not that big and unless she made this chili homemade if it's store-bought or something it's gonna have a lot of hydrogenated oils made with bad stuff but um and the pasta is just the white refined carb. Again, if you're really overweight and have a lot of weight to lose, I know she's not trying to lose weight, but you really shouldn't eat pasta. Even whole wheat pasta, protein pasta, stay away from it. You don't need it. And you don't need bread. And you certainly don't need pasta with a side of bread. Eat a sweet potato. Eat a bunch of vegetables and some uh, healthy proteins and um you know, maybe a little side of rice or quinoa or something. Try to stay away from the, like, the breads and pastas, the cereals. And I would even stick oatmeal into that category unless you're going to do a small serving of steel cut oats. Getty IDK, I'm not too hard and just needed food. Okay, love you, bye. What I eat... Okay. Um, okay. Now this really pissed people off. The amount of fat phobia on this app. Is okay, if you didn't, if you're not looking at the screen, the very first part that she was referring to that she said pissed people off was her flaunting around in a, in a bikini. And if you want to go and be in a bikini and go swimming for like three hours, great. But the, the, um, being half naked showing off your body trying to get all this external validation and shoving in people's face i'm so beautiful you have to find me hot fat is beautiful no people have a right to think what they want and, and honestly it's degrading it's like not uplifting and empowering uh you know running around half naked begging for views and clicks and and uh some sort of like commendation from people online that that's not going to help your confidence and i'm not just saying fat girls should i don't think thin girls should do it if you want to just show your body off because you're comfortable or you're showing off an outfit fine but these fat acceptance people are always doing it as a means to say look at me look at my butt and and like sh shove their body and their weight and stuff in our faces and and that that's what i don't like is atrocious well then maybe if the fat phobia is so bad on tiktok you should get off the tiktok how about that that video got so many more comments today and if you're not looking this woman is not chubby she's not fat she's not obese she is morbidly morbidly obese okay she is so unhealthy she has got she's got over 130 pounds to lose um from a different side of TikTok, commenting how unhealthy I am and how- You aren't healthy. Even if your blood work's good right Ooh. now, it's good until it's not. And your joints are still getting excess damage. You definitely have inflammation. I guarantee you have fatty liver. You're probably pre-diabetic. I guarantee you definitely have periods of high blood sugar. And you definitely have a lot of high insulin. And, um... That's just reality. Oh, I'm a bad example for um, young people and just some. You can't bend over forward and touch your toes. If you can't do that, then you've got FUPA to lose. Some pretty awful things. Th you know what? That's not awful. That You may think it's awful and I'm sorry that you feel that way, but it's reality. That's just how it is. And if you don't like it, then turn your comments off or don't make videos of you literally half naked in a bikini throwing it in people's faces. Like that, that you got to take the good with the bad.
I guess people like me are the bad, right? Oops. I'm just looking to see ones that might be popular right now or ones that I know. Okay, let's look at this one. Both are beautiful, but one is more realistic. This so has a body like this, and this woman showing herself. She's got a little bit of a skinny arm, average leg, really, maybe about 60, 80 pounds overweight. It's almost all in her belly, but she's not like morbidly obese. Okay, she's maybe about 85 pounds overweight. Body like this also looks like this. And what all she did was pull her pants like waistline down and flop out her gut and start jiggling it around like uh like she let a tide of jello loose and, and it's not attractive i don't find it attractive that's just me though but as far as her just dancing around and like showing off an outfit i don't care that's fine but the thing is, is you, you can like your body, you can do whatever you want, but you cannot expect people to find it attractive. I mean, she looks like she's about eight months pregnant with twins. And I don't think she is. So that's not good. But especially because guys too, like, like I said, she's carrying most of her weight almost exclusively in her stomach. And that is the most dangerous weight. Cause that means not only do you have a lot of, uh, subcutaneous fat but you have a lot of visceral fat and that is the fat around your organs and it is truly not good even if you're thin but you have a little bit of pudge or you don't have a healthy diet and you have a lot of visceral fat that is not good and it's very dangerous and you really really need to get that under control girl get your life together okay Imagine the day they see you again. Okay, this says, friendly reminder, because you know this is how they talk, right? Kind of like Melissa, I can hear, or Marissa, I can hear Marissa in my mind. So I'm like reading it like, a friendly reminder, you don't need to lose weight to be better, but it will make you better. And you are just, well, better. Okay, and then she, she showed herself in this outfit, and she looks really cute. It's a cute outfit, I like it. But... Again, obese, very obese. Most of her weight is in her abdomen. And um, it's not healthy. And, um, you know, she has a, a, a pretty face. I like her makeup. She would just be healthier and overall look better and feel better if she lost weight. And it's not just about looks, guys. I know it can come across as being shallow, but it is about your health. And no matter what these people say it is not healthy to be any more than maybe 20 25 pounds overweight once you get to where you're 30 40 100 200 pounds overweight it is not healthy so yes losing weight would better you so it's just a fact okay we'll look at a couple more and then we'll call it a day Hmm. Let's see. Let's pick here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Here's some popular ones. Here's some popular ones. A, a weight gaining journey. Why is this allowed on this app? This is self harm. It's self degradation. It's fetish content. And I thought this was an app predominantly used by kids. Why are they allowing this? I mean, if you don't know, check out, I made a video about this. Um, it's one of my last like four videos on my channel. Go check it out. And it is about how easy and accessible it is to find feeder fetish content on TikTok. I mean, what the actual hell? This woman ought to be ashamed of herself. I'm, it says, I am the hot BBW you've always wanted. Free the belly, show your belly. No, and you're on a what? This woman again, very large, carrying a large portion of fat in her gunt or fupa or whatever you want to call. It. She's huge, and she's very unhealthy, 
and she's going to have a lot of health problems. I see an actual comment that says, uh, you should be ashamed. Somebody <laughs> said it looks like we're evolving backwards. This has to be a joke. But this is a joke, right? Like, this is not taken seriously because it's ridiculous. Um, and she says she's on a weight gain journey. I mean, you ought to be ashamed. People that do this, I'm sorry, they, they should not have their health care covered. They shouldn't have any health care coverage. Because they are making themselves sick on purpose. No, the they shouldn't get any difference, uh, special or different treatment. They shouldn't get food stamps because clearly they have plenty of money and plenty of food. And, and maybe that just sounds mean, but you know, at this for people like this, I'm sorry, all the government should offer them is a year's membership to a gym. Get on it. Th this this pisses me off. Oh my god, and it's tragic if you were not looking at the screen. She's showing pictures of her from before, and she was a thin, thin, beautiful woman. The same as the world. Oh my god, and she wasn't too thin. She was a good, healthy weight. This is an absolute tragedy unfolding right before our eyes. We are watching it in real time, and TikTok is allowing her to post it, promote it, and they could very easily be paying her for it, and they ought to be a freaking shame. Oh my god. Wow, so this is feeder content, and this is, this is mental health problems. This is... This is self-hate and self-harm. She has gained at least 100 pounds. This is, maybe more. This is absolutely so sad. Do people not love her in her life to tell her, you've got to stop this craziness? Oh my God. Okay, we'll watch one more. Maybe we'll find one that's like positive so that we end on like a treat in this little trick-or-treat thing. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't know if we're going to find a treat here, guys. I don't I don't know if we're going to find a treat here. We might have to do a trick. Here. Body positivity. This, this one's been making rounds. <laughs> Body positivity has encouraged so many people of all sizes to feel comfortable in their bodies, which is obviously positive. First of all, that's not true. Okay, because they DM anybody who's a smaller fat than them, who's thin, who's fit, who's super skinny, or who's anorexic, you know, who's got a, a restrictive eating disorder, and they, they, they damn and shame and basically excommunicate anybody who has lost weight, even accidentally, despite what they say they do, or wants to lose weight for some reason, or wants to try to eat healthier, even if they don't want to lose weight, if they just want to eat healthier, they damn them for, there's no good foods or bad foods, you're moralizing foods, there's good and bad foods, dumbasses, you know it, and you're just trying to perpetuate your delusion onto everybody else, but, um, no, body diversity or body or body positivity is not diverse. It is not about anybody but the fattest of the fat. We all deserve to feel respected and have dignity. No, no, you don't. I mean, I agree. You do. Everyone deserves to feel respect and dignity. First of all, but respect is earned. But you do deserve basic common courtesy and stuff like that. But you, these people preach it and demand it, but they certainly don't give it. Gee. But I'd like for us to admit that straight sized bodies look to be more and more represented in the space. Actually, uh, well, yeah, they're being more represented in the in the body positivity space because anybody who who has a body deserves to be body positive. So body positivity belongs to anybody because we all have a body if we're still here talking, watching TikToks and all that. Um, fat acceptance. Now, that's a different thing at the expense of seeing other body types, like the fat bodies that was originally created to center and advocate for. And these people get mad because this, no matter what they say, this isn't about rights or, and you know, um, 
being treated equally this all comes down to they are mad because people find thinner people more attractive and they want to be the ones that are the hottest girls and they want everybody to want them and think they're gorgeous but they don't want to put in the work to be like the actual hot girls all it is is a group of uh rejected angry bitter fat chicks who hate thin chicks that that's all it is and by thin I could mean actually thin or thin as in you're thinner than them and it doesn't matter you could still be obese but if you're thinner than them you're thinner and they hate you that's all it all comes down to very shallow physical appearances and stuff and entitlement with these people so here I am to take up space in this movement, a cleanse for your body positivity feed, if you will, showing off my belly, my back rolls, my thighs. Yeah, tell me again how empowering and uplifting and world changing it is to like get on TikTok in your underwear and flop your rolls around and shake them and jiggle them and look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but like th what is empowering about that? What is world changing about that? I, I think it's like, I, I think that this is like self degradate, de degrading personally. Physical features I'm oppressed for, vilified for. You know why though? Because people are oppressed by these features and vilified because they are a sign of poor health, poor lifestyle choices, lack of motivation and lack of self-discipline. And we are naturally designed to like people who have the shape of human when you aren't shaped like a human anymore how can you expect thor to be attracted to you why is it that you have to have all the guys that are muscle bound and sexy and hot but you can sit there and look like the pillsbury dough girl that's not that's not how it works i mean for some people maybe but like your body fat starts to like go into all kinds of weird places and you start getting huge and like from the dawn of time being a fit healthy weight women yeah maybe having a little bit of hip and butt and thigh that's normal but being too big and hindered by our weight you know what the cavemen and, and the other like cro magnons and stuff men said they went "Ooh, that's not a good mate because that person's not healthy which means you can't have healthy babies you can't help protect the tribe and you cannot um contribute an equal part and you're going to be a hindrance more than a help so they always naturally throughout our lifetimes we've gravitated towards fitter healthier bodies and you can't say you're not hindered this woman cannot walk right she cannot sit in a chair right she cannot bend down and touch her her toes right or in hate i told you i'm on a, i'm on a roll today mm. for i am body positive no you're not body positive if you were body positive you would eat a little bit less and do some things to lose weight. And for somebody, once you get to this size, guys, the initial weight loss is easy because you don't have to change what you eat and you don't have to go to the gym two hours a day. She just has to eat a little bit less, even of the same food she's eating. And initially not even exercise. This woman eats enough for probably two and a half or three people a day. So all she has to do is eat for one and a half people a day and she would lose some weight. You can still eat a lot of food at this size and lose weight. Guys, you don't have to starve yourself. You don't have to kill yourself in the gym like they taught you on The Biggest Loser. Like it doesn't have to be that difficult. And I understand there's people with food issues. I have huge food issues and problems, but you can deal with them. But, but, be, but being overweight is not good for your mental health and it doesn't help you. And then I know poor mental health is not good for your, your physical self. So you need to kind of work on both simultaneously. But, ugh. Okay, she's done. All right, we're going to end it here. I'm sorry. That was a nice little uh, rant. But um, I hope you guys liked it. And uh, if you like my content and you want to see more uh, body positivity, fat acceptance reacts, and I react to Amber and sometimes Foodie, not very often though, and some other ones thrown in there, April Lauren, Glitter and Lasers, whoever I feel like it, like, hit the bell, come check me out, 
and I am working on getting up to 500, 500 subscribers, and then I'm going to be on that countdown to 1,000, then hopefully 1,500, 2,000. Hopefully we'll get there. So anyways, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you have a good Friday, and I will talk to you all later.